everybody. I'm going to be doing a tutorial about how to use metal to export models from FFXIV into Blender. So, first things first, you're going to need metal. I'm going to have a link to the GitHub for metal in the description below, and you can uh, download it and put it into your game using Dalamud tutorials. You can find plenty of stuff about that online. I'm not going to go over any of that. Once metal is in your game and you have it installed, you're going to press dash and type metal into the say command. It's going to open this little menu right here. Uh, in this menu, you can select targets and you can basically uh, go ahead and export anything. Uh, there's chocobo trainees, chocobo keepers, uh, some NPCs, a few M unnamed NPCs around here. Um, and then Dahlia is my player character, so I'm going to go ahead and click Dahlia. It's going to go ahead and show you this entire thing. So, I am going to click export all models. It's going to ask about extra cache files, export type, and pose mode. Just keep all this stuff how it normally is and go ahead and press export. It's going to ask you where you want to save it, and I'm going to put mine in my documents folder. I already have a few of these, so I don't actually need to export this. You'll just press OK. I'm going to press cancel because I already have them. But you'll just press OK, and it'll take a moment to export the character, and it'll tell you when it's finished exporting. You can do this for anything that you need that's in the game, so feel free to export as much stuff as you possibly need. After you're finished with that, we can exit out of Final Fantasy XIV and open up Blender. I will meet you there. Okay, so here we are in Blender. We're going to need a few things before we can actually work with our FFXIV models. And because we're using metal, you're going to need metal tools for Blender, which you can get from this GitHub link. I will put it in the description below. You're going to go over to where it says releases and you're going to go down to metal tools 0.1.1 and go ahead and click on that to download it. Once it finishes downloading, you're going to go into Blender. You're going to go up to Edit Preferences, and you're going to go over to this little drop-down bar and press Install from Disk. You're going to find where you saved your Metal Tools, which mine is right here. You're going to go ahead and press Install from Disk, and it'll say it installed Metal Tools. In my case, it reinstalled them because I already had them. Then you're just going to look, search for add-ons and search Metal. Once you search it, it should be like this, and you can just press this button here and it will check it. Once it has a white check mark next to it, it means it's enabled. Make sure you're on Blender 4.5, um, because that it needs to be 4.5 uh, or above for these plugins for Metal to work, so just make sure you have Blender 4.5. Now that you have Metal uh, installed into Blender, you're going to go up to this little it's very hard to see, but there's a little arrow right there. You're going to go ahead and click on that. It's going to extend a toolbar. Down here, it says Metal Tools at the bottom. And you're going to go to where it says Metal Import, Import GLTF. So go ahead and click that. Then you can find your character model. In my case, Dahlia is right here. You're going to open the folder, and right here is, the, is Dahlia's GLTF. I'm going to go ahead and press that and press Import. And then just give it a minute because... Uh, Final Fantasy XIV models are very big. So in my case, I have a model, I have a few different models. So I have this model here, which is a battle ready pose version of Dahlia. And I also have another one, which I can show you, which is probably what you're going to end up with, which is this one here. So just give it one moment. This one has no um, no pose already set to it, so this is probably what yours is going to end up looking like. It's just a model, it's in grayscale right now, and it has a bunch of bones on it, which is exactly what we want. So this is the import for the model. I'm going to go ahead and go up to this top tab with these circles, and the final one shows a viewport shading. You see right now the model is dark, it looks kind of weird, there's a bunch of like little staticky crusties everywhere. Um, this is perfectly normal. Uh, we're going to add a light to the scene so that we can light our model and I'll show you how to do that. You're going to go ahead and click in this workspace anywhere you want, just not on the model itself. Press Shift A 
Once you press Shift-A, you're going to see this list. You're going to go to Mesh and click Plane. We're going to add a plane so that when we add a light, our, we'll be able to see the shading for the model. I'm just doing this as a simple thing to show you how it works. I'm just going to add a long plane here, and then I'm going to do Shift-A again. Mesh, Plane, and add another one. Go ahead and click the plane you just added, so it'll be the small one, not the one we just made long. So just the tiny plane. You can also click it in this menu here. So I'm going to click it just to show you that you can do that. Then we're going to do R X 90 and press enter. And then you're going to go up to this tool over here that says move. And we're going to reposition it behind the character. And then we're going to go to this move that says scale and go ahead and scale that up so that we have a wall behind the character. So now we have a wall and a floor. Next thing we're going to do is add a light. So again, we're going to do click uh, off of all your objects, press shift A. We're going to go down into this list at the bottom. It says light. I'm going to add a point light. These should spawn on the floor underneath of your character's feet if you haven't moved to them. Then you're going to go ahead and hit G and this will let you move the light around. And anytime you want to confirm the position, you just click and you can reposition this light to wherever you want. I'm going to reposition it to probably about in front of the character. So now we can see that the light is hitting my character and you can sort of see how that looks. I'm not going to do any more too in depth with this light because I did go over that in my Vroid tutorial. Um, but if you go to this data icon that has a light on it, you can click that. And you can actually change how bright the light is and how much exposure it is, the radius of the light, the color of the light. So we'll do just like a sort of yellowish orange light for this. Next, you're going to want to know how to pose your character, obviously, because that's part of why you're going to want them in Blender in the first place. You're going to go up to your character and you have them selected. You're going to go to pose mode. And this is going to let you manipulate all the bones that they have. Inside of this window, you're going to want to press Alt-Z so that you can see through the character and you can see all the bones. You're also going to want to go to Viewport Shading Material Preview because this lets you see a little bit easier since uh, this is hard to see. And since we're in pose mode, oh actually, I'm, I apologize. You're going to want to go to Armature inside of the character and then press pose mode and that's gonna it's gonna do the same thing but it's just a bit better <laughs> but you're gonna press alt z and that's gonna let you see through the character like this you can also go to uh, this mode which leaves it unrendered entirely if that helps you but i prefer using uh, this mode here this giant bone is often in the way so what you can do if you can't like see past like a, a root bone like this uh, is you can try to find it which I think it's right here um, and I'm gonna see if I can there we go I hid the bone so that we can see so I just pressed I just found the bone in the list it'll highlight itself and then right click it and press hide it won't go away it'll just be hidden so you can see underneath of it these are all bones and what we can do is we can actually go to this rotate tool over here and you can actually use these bones to rotate your character's position. So this one is obviously the neck bone. Over here you can see these tiny little bones. This actually controls Dahlia's hair so you can rotate the hair and sort of position it in a better way so it's not clipping through your model. There's bones for every single thing on a Final Fantasy model, you know, you have bones for the ears, for the bunny ears, for the crown, the hair, the eyes, the mouth, everything. I'm not going to do anything too crazy because my goal here is just to show you how to use it. You're going to see that the arms have two bones and you're going to want to select the bone that's underneath the first one or else it'll just sort of warp the arms and that's not what we want. So just double click the bones and then you can warp them. I'm not doing anything crazy, I'm just doing a basic pose to show you how to use this and then you can use your creativity from there. Here's some of the mouth and for the mouth you're gonna want to use the move tool instead of rotate because it'll probably look kind of weird if you use the rotate tool 
and you're just gonna move the mouthpieces. We're gonna just make a little smile, nothing crazy. This is very similar to how you would do it uh, if you're using the poser mod that's in the Final Fantasy game itself, um, but instead it's just in Blender. So now that I've posed uh, Dahlia, I'm gonna go ahead and click this eyeball next to his character, like Dahlia Akris 01. And that'll get rid of all of the points so we can actually see what he looks like. And I think he looks really cute. So from here, you're gonna wanna take a picture, right? And in order to take a picture, we're gonna need to add a camera. First things first, we gotta get out of pose mode. So we're gonna go back to object mode, then press shift A, and you're gonna want to go to where it says camera. So go ahead and click that. A camera will spawn probably down at your character's feet. What you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go into this menu, go to view, go to camera to view, then go up to where it says view up here next to object mode and press cameras, set active object as camera, and you're going to zoom in. Now that your camera is to your view and you're on the camera, you can move it around. So I'm going to move it up here. Then I'm going to go back up into these circles and I'm going to go to viewport shading rendered, and this will go back into the lighting mode. And of course, like I said earlier, you can adjust the lighting however you want. You can also go into the render properties and change the rendering. I'm going to use cycles because I believe it looks better. Another thing you can do is go to output and actually change the resolution of your camera if you want different sizes. This is something I forgot to go over in my Vroid tutorial, but you can adjust the size of this however you want. So you can see I can make it larger or smaller. I'm gonna make a picture that looks like this. So it's just a square shape, but you can adjust that however you want to, it's completely up to you. Once you have your lighting the way you want, your pose the way you want, and your camera set in an angle that you prefer, so I'm gonna put mine just right in front. Don't worry if it looks all staticky, we're going to fix that. You're gonna go back into render. You're gonna go down to where it says denoise and click that. This is gonna help with the final product. Right now it's going to look odd, but it will um, sort itself out properly. I'm going to make my max samples at 4000 because the more samples it has, the more clear the image will look. And my min samples are going to be 2000. This will sort of tell the program that I want things to be much more clear and crisp looking. So don't worry if it looks kind of weird in the beginning. Once you're ready to export your image and like sort of get your picture going, you can go up to where it says render and render image. This is gonna take a while, so just be patient with it. Once it's finished, the top bar will let you know all this remaining time and memory and peak will all disappear once it is finished rendering the image. And I'll come back and let you know how to save it from there. Okay. The render is finished, all you have to do now is press uh, up here where it says image, go to save, and you can save it as whatever you want. I'm going to call mine Dahlia1, and that is the basics of rendering images with Blender. I hope that's helpful for all your Final Fantasy rendering needs. Metal's really easy to use, and I recommend it. I've not had any problems with it, so thank you so much for watching, I'll see you later. Bye! Three, two.